Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Singapore Website Awards for the year 2020. I'm your host, Laureen, and I cannot wait to have the best time ever with you guys here today. Now, over the last three years, we have seen some spectacular website submissions from you guys. And I have to say, 2020 was no different. You guys certainly did not disappoint. And today, we are going to be taking a look at some of the best websites here in Singapore. And we're going to be honoring and recognizing them for their talent, effort, performance, overall aesthetics, and functionality. And on top of that, our esteemed panel of judges and speakers are also going to be presenting a few keynote presentations. And the highlight, you might ask, well, that would have to be the winner announcements for the coveted Site of the Year Award for our personal, commercial, and e-commerce categories, where our winners will be taking home a prize of $1,000 worth of Exabytes credit. Ain't that fantastic? I can't wait to start. Now, before we begin, in case you are new to Zoom and you're not too sure how things work around here, well, let's take a quick look at our briefing deck to make sure you're up to speed with everything that's happening today. Now, <clears throat> for the benefit of everyone, I'm sure you would have noticed that all participants have been muted by default. So that leaves you with two options to communicate with us and with each other. The first being the Q&A function. Now, this is used predominantly if you have any questions for our speakers later on throughout the entire day. Feel free to click on that Q&A button. The form will come up, type in your question and hit send. And of course, we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to leave your questions, make them as um, detailed as you like, really, because essentially what's going to happen is that's going to help us understand your perspective better and help us tailor the answers more accurately and accordingly. Moving forward, we also have our chat function. Now, if you don't already have the chat up and running, go ahead and click on the chat button. It's right beneath your screen. Click on that. The chat box will pop up and make sure before you send any messages out, have all panelists and attendees selected. So I'm going to get the ball rolling right here. I'm going to say hello, everyone. And you guys can take it from there. Go ahead and send some sunshine, you know, towards everyone's way. It's fine. I think we need it, especially with, you know, times being a little bit hard right now, given our circumstance. I'm sure you guys can do it. And that wraps up the technical part of our uh, technical part of our event. Now, you guys, if you are interested in sharing this live stream with your friends, your family, basically anyone, our team is going to be pasting the link to this event in the chat box right now. And of course, if you do take any screenshots or pictures from our event here today, go ahead and tag us on our Facebook page, that Singapore Website Awards to the hashtags SWA, Exabytes and Grow Digital. Once again, that's SWA 2020, Exabytes and Grow Digital. And with that, we are wrapping things up for a little briefing session here. Our introduction is done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Singapore Website Awards 2020. Let's go. We're going to dive right in, and I'd like to welcome to the screen for his opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vixen Tan, the Senior Vice President of Marketing from Exabytes. Hi, Vixen. Hi, Laureen. Hello. Nice to see you again. I hope you've been well since we last spoke. Yeah, great to see you again here, and great <laughs> to see everyone here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Vixen, you are no stranger to Zoom and our events here. So, whenever you're ready, please take it away. The screen is yours. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, welcome again, um, the fellow uh, participants and, uh, yeah, judges, expert judges and so on and attending virtually our Singapore Website Awards. So, I believe uh, previously you guys have been met. I mean, we met before face-to-face -face, uh, last few years ago. So, when we are doing have this kind of ceremony, but uh, it's in physical, but not virtually. So yeah, but today it's good that we have Zoom right now and to, to have the, I mean, this ceremony to make it a move forward and uh, yeah, much more greater for Okay, yep, let's move on. And um, today is our, our Singapore Website Awards. And uh, besides that, basically we have not just a Singapore Website Awards, to introduce that we have also uh, Malaysia Website Awards and also Indonesia Website Awards. So for those like um, if you are Asians that are helping others like Malaysians or Singapore, Singaporean or also Indonesian company that have having them uh, uh, I mean create a work, great websites and so on, hopefully can have a summit towards our MWA or MY, SWA.SG or IW.ID. It's based on uh, which clients' websites that you help with, then we will help to like um, having our judge locally in throughout that country. And then we give them the marks and uh, votes as well to, to, to get your uh, recognitions on that. All right. Yeah, let's um, move on to um, our judges. 
So I would like to really uh, appreciate and thanks. Thanks for the time, Alvin. See you again here, even virtually. Thank you again, and Pranav. Yeah, thank you again. And uh, yeah, that is me. And also, uh, Salinya. Yeah, thank, thanks again for you guys. I really appreciate for your time. Even you are, you are, you are quite busy, but uh, you're willing to have spent some time on that to, to actually give it some marks and uh, reviews on those submissions to uh, Singapore Website Awards. And I really, really thank you. And uh, yeah, please uh, give a round of applause, even virtually that we're doing that. Okay, yeah. All right. And um, this year, not to say this year, it's the 2020. So Singapore, Singapore Website Award is, sorry. A moment, please. I I think I'm gonna turn off my phone. Okay, so yep. <clears throat> For two two snaps, so we can see that actually we are having a uh, quite some numbers of the submissions. So there is a uh, more than hundred kind of nominations on that, and uh, we have more than thousands of uh, work votes on our Singapore website work nominations uh, websites. Okay, and uh, we we need you guys to actually go and share around and uh, yeah, showing to I mean just just, just share Singapore website works to all around our friends and so on to get them to actually actively submit in or actively participate so that we can get more websites being recognized. Okay, let's move to uh, the judge on the criteria. Uh, Sammy, go to the next slide. Oh, Dixon, are you still there with us? I think he's having a little bit of uh, technical issues. I'm, I'm not really sure if I still see him. Oh, yeah, he got disconnected. Okay, you guys. Um, so let's just wait, give him a couple of seconds for him to come back. And uh, we'll pick things up from where we left off. So the thing about uh, events like this, I'm sure you would know that uh, we have technical issues from time to time. And yeah, I see him signing in. Let's give him a couple more seconds. Okay, there you go. Hi, Vixen. I'm so sorry. Well, it's okay. <laughs> that, 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 that is the internet connection issue right now here. <laughs> Understand, okay. please continue. Yeah, right here. All right. Okay. So, yeah, uh, in terms of the uh, important elements, so how we actually judge uh, websites, how we actually, our experts and our juries and actually do, 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 doing a judge on that. So, so, we based on this kind of six criteria on that. So, firstly, we based on content. So, to be honest, content and SEO is very, very close. They are, they, are, they are friend, friend. Okay, right? So, the thing is, uh, we, 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 are, we are actually seeing some kind of like people, um, how to say, in terms of content, some people are really can create a lot of good contents on that. But some of the websites is actually lack of the contents. And some of them having a good content, but no layout. So that, that is actually, uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can make some improvement on that. So probably you can see for like um, someone uh, experts to giving some uh, advice on that, how we can actually do a good one. So even content, even for uh, people to read, but also for SEO. SEO, which means that we are also giving out to Google Spider to read on it. So basically that is a structure on the back end. So how we can actually utilize content into both ways. So basically for, for those that having assumptions towards uh, Singapore website awards, so probably you can, uh, maybe you can seek for judges and uh, there are experts on the advice on that. So probably you can get like giving some kind of like advice on that, how we can actually do the best one. And so in terms of design, so basically design is based on the creativity, okay? And uh, I'm a graphic designer previously, and also I'm a web designer as well. So currently I'm handling uh, digital marketing as well and, and so on. So previously I also do websites for customers as well. So they are more, more, more towards like, uh, they want this kind of design, they want fancy, they want, uh, previously you know that we, we, have, we have some kind of animations with flash and so on. So that is, that is probably, now today, it's not what actually we are looking for. We want speed, we want fast, we want simple. So that also due to what, what kind of demands that uh, people are looking for, customer looking for, and we make it more creative and make it more lightweight because Google look for speed, so on. Okay, so for accessibility then, um, yeah, it's more about the mobile because um, now today every website, it doesn't mean that you build for desktop view. 
is it is built for mobile first. So I I'm I'm actually going to ask. I mean, a very good question here is on the floor towards uh, if you guys that doing websites to a customer, do you actually start from mobile first? Maybe you can ask yourself. Am I already started to do based on mobile first or based on desktop first? In our century, in my century, my century is based on desktop first, which is for now today. I don't think it's a uh, it's a prioritized on uh, desktop first. It, it has has sub, supposed to be going to a mobile first. Then only judge on all your on your desktop is it looking good, okay? But mobile will go first, okay? Because everyone browsing your websites or get to know your website is throughout the mobile first, all right? Okay, for interactions. So interactions, is, it means that how actually traffic, how actually how many people that are giving out comments, if you're writing a blog, so how you can actually engage your visitors with your comments, how people actually share your content, okay? How people actually like recommend each other and your, you have a lot of traffic in, into uh, your websites. And last thing, last thing is the very most important things that uh, you might need to take into it, which is the pay speech. So, which means that your website's your website's loading fast or not. So that is quite um, depends on the uh, if you are the web designer that you are knowing how to actually use the Juju metrics and also Google Page Speed, right? So you can actually have a have a judge on that. So mainly is uh, like about your structures, your CSS structures. You know, many fights your CSS and JavaScript and so on. And also the main thing is the team that you're using. If you are doing by using uh, WordPress, definitely you might need to choose the right, the right team to go with, okay? So most of the team right now, right? They, they are based on the speeds to, to carve it out and their structure is different. But the thing is when you're testing on that, basically you can use that demo and go to the Google page, page, right? To judge on that first before you use the team or you buy the team, right? And also, don't install too much of plugins. I wouldn't suggest to install a many, many, many plugins into your WordPress websites because they were slowing down. And just to have some of the most important things, most important plugins and reduce it. And the thing is, more important thing is the server. So how is the server actually running to help if you are doing WordPress? So basically right now we suggest to use Lightspeed, okay? And uh, Lightspeed is one of the great technology right now to actually serve your website. This is like even, even like a lightning fast kind of way because uh, the technologies and um, also fully, fully match with the WordPress, WordPress uh, CMS. So let's speak WordPress and also catch. So that's three things that you need to take in mind that it, as a basic step to, to run your websites, at least in basic mode, you're running fast. Then after that, you only optimize and giving more updates on that, then you still remain the speeds. Okay, that, that is, um yeah, how we can actually mm, judge on the websites. So yeah, that that is well, very I mean sim simple and go ahead and uh, again I'm I'm here to really really uh, appreciate all of your attendees even we are virtually and uh, your submissions and your new mentions and also ex ex judges that attending this Singapore website awards and money by exabytes and thank you again. All right, thanks, Vixen. Thank you. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks again. Feel free to stay around for the rest of the event, of course. You can use more people, the more the merrier. Bye. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that was the opening keynote by Vixen Tan, the Senior Vice President of Marketing from Exabyte. And right now, we're just going to dive right in. We're going to be announcing the uh, winner of the site of the month for the commercial category. So the recipients of this category will be taking home a prize worth $500 worth of Exabyte's credit. So here we go. For the months of January to June, we're going to go straight, straight to February right here. Our winner is lovechips.co by Kelvin Ang. Hi, Hi Lauren. Kelvin. Hi, Lauren. Thank you for having Hi. me. Go ahead. You have a few minutes, uh, actually, not a few minutes, a few seconds here, up to a minute to give your appreciation speech. Go right ahead. Sure. So, uh, first of all, I really appreciate uh, Exabytes and Singapore Websites Awards teams for our work hard relentlessly to make these awards, to organize these awards uh, ceremonies despite the pandemic periods. Definitely, it's very weird for me to receive award over the Zoom calls, and I believe that it will be, will be the first time for a lot of people over here. And yes, the second one is I also want to take this opportunity to uh, thank my partner, Jenny, for working hard side by side along for the past two years to make sure that these websites uh, grow super well as well as uh, create a lot of content in this website as well. So for those who don't know who are us, we are, we are lovechip.co, we are the platform for singles 
out there to connect through activities. And if you're singles and you love activities, do hit us up. Do hit us up. Okay. Yep. Thank right. you, guys. Super cool. Thanks, Kelvin. Congratulations once again. Good job there. All right, you guys, moving forward for the month of March. Our winner is edac.com.sg by edac. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Now, for the month of April, our winner is status.com.sg by Karuna Singapore Private Limited. Hello, congratulations. Oh, you're, you're actually on mute. We can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. All right thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very huge honor for us to win in this um, award and we will always try our best to do better for next time. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And we hope to see you again next year. Congratulations right. once again. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Okay, you guys. Up next for the month of May, our winner is crowdhost.com by Chris Digital Private Limited. <laughs> Let's have our representative join us on screen. Hello, congratulations. Hi, hello. Hi. Can you hear me, right? Yes, absolutely, loud and clear. All right, all right. Uh, we, we are very honored to be awarded this, uh, this, this category uh, for the month of May last year. Uh, thank you, SWA. Thank you, Exabytes, for hosting this, uh, this, this SWA for, for the years. Uh, we definitely would love to continue to build uh, fantastic websites for our clients as well. And we hope to be uh, to, here, to join you guys again next year. Absolutely, and we look forward to having you as well. Congratulations once again. Thank you. All right, have a great day. Bye. Okay, you guys, finally, for the month of June, our winner is SingaporeFinancialPlanners.com by Mohammad Ferdal Shazwani. And there you have it. Those are our winners for the month of January to June. Let's give them a virtual round of applause for those of you watching in the chat or on Facebook right now. Congratulations once again. Great job, you guys. We hope to see you uh, more submissions from you guys in the future. And right now, we're going to be talking to Eugene, the SEO King, the Digital Director of Shared IT Services. Hi, Eugene. Hi, guys. How's it going? Right. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice I'm... to see you again. <laughs> I'm very excited, right? Uh, thanks, uh, Exabytes, for inviting me to be the first speaker. I think a lot is expected uh, once you are the first speaker, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I think that's, that's, that's partially true. I mean, you do set the mood, but no pressure at all. I think uh, everyone who's watching around is pretty chill. So just have a great yeah. time. And you are going to be talking about effective SEO hacks to bring leads for your business. Yeah, so what, what essentially I'll be doing is I'm trying to condense a three-hour talk into maybe 30 minutes <laughs> or an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it will well, be action packed. <laughs> okay. We look forward to it. So Eugene, go ahead and share your screen. All right. Just give me a minute. Absolutely. And you guys, if, once again, if you have any questions for Eugene here at any point in time, just click on the Q&A button. It's right beneath your screen. Type in your question and hit send. And of course, if time persists, we will be answering those questions on your behalf. All right, it's okay. all good? Yes. Okay, Eugene, so whenever you're ready, the screen is yours. Take it away. And if you need me, just holler. I'll be here. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Today, the topic is rightfully so, effective SEO hacks to bring leads to your business, right? So what is it that SEO? So we will try to deep dive into it. Just a minute. Right, so before I begin, let me have a short introduction about myself. I'm the former digital director of uh, Standard Chartered Bank in Singapore, and we were basically handling all the bank products there is, right? And I was also involved in the digitalization efforts of the Catholic Church in Singapore, where we try to enable them to ensure that they are social media ready and that they have the necessary um, 
technology to go live, uh, which is very essential in this uh, pandemic. So this was done years ago. Uh, prior experiences, I have experiences in customer loyalty program, basically uh, customer relationship management and PDPA implementation. And today, as you know, a good website or a good business should look at all these kind of things, right? And I'm an avid digital uh, marketing strategist and I manage 360 digital campaigns for clients. And currently I am a mentor for Lithium Academy for their professional diploma in digital marketing implementation, right? Just a minute. Right, so today's topic is effective SEO hacks to bring leads to your business. Do you even know where to begin, right? So I'm sure the question on everyone's mind is, how come her website won and mine did not? I thought I, I do a little bit of a kind of like a joke to lighten things up, right? So basically we'll look at very quickly at the components of a good website, which was kind of uh, run over earlier, but I have also prepared uh, kind of my version to further enhance of what that has been covered. So basically you look at uh, design and functionality. Design and functionality is all about branding, ease of use, the use of typography and colors. Consider the psychology of colors and it's all about the user experience. And today we have with us how to become a UX leader in a large organization, which Pranav will cover later. Next, we look at reliability and ease of use. This is in the area of hosting. Please use Exabytes for your hosting. Uh, your website must have SSL, easy to navigate, so Exabytes will be able to handle your SSL. And you must consider your different user pathways and flow as well. Next, your website has to be fast and you have to consider platform compatibility like device browser compatibility, page, uh, page speed, uh, page load speed and mobile optimization, of course. Next, you need to look at uh, content relevance and management, easy to understand copywriting, simplify your jargons and lingo, and having a good uh, content management system, right? And next, you look at the interaction and conversion, whether you have the relevant content, the use of videos, organized, easy to find content, and you you look at conversion, you look at clear call to action, whether you have a CRM and a sales funnel, which um, Salia will cover on how to get your website aligned with your sales funnel. And we also have Shan who will cover building the perfect service business website is very important that having a business, you must have the key components of what your service business uh, require. And of course, I will cover effective SEO hacks to, hacks to bring leads to your business. So very quickly, we'll look at how the pandemic influenced digital marketing, right? As you know, new normal. When will the normal actually return? Is it end of the year? Is it end of next year or almost never, right? So we businesses are forced to operate in this thing called the new normal and social distancing, which means that restaurants can operate at 50% capacity, who are most affected, restaurants, retail, airline, travel hotels, and restaurants and businesses are closing. Thank you for your patronage. This restaurant has been permanently closed, right? So how did the pandemic influence digital marketing? Who was impacted? As what we say, the food outlets, the florists, the neighborhood hardware shop. Why were they impacted? Because they relied too much on the footfall traffic. They have no online order system in place. They have no means to deliver to their customer even, and they do not adapt fast enough. So they were perhaps caught off guard. Like there is, as what I say, there's no online ordering system, no e-commerce. And FMB relied too much on the likes of Grab, Deliveroo, and Food Panda and whatever deliver systems that you have, food delivery systems that you have in Malaysia. But the question is, who has the customer information? It is all these platforms. So businesses have no way to remarket to them. 
right? They just rely on the platform. A lot of them are resistive to technology. They have they their excuse. I don't need a website. So is this all uh, doom and gloom then, right? Here's the thing, right? If uh, a lot of the myth is this, I do not have a website. Then what do you rely? Flyers. What uh, social media is for young kids? Are you sure? Do you know the right way to target? Google my what? Is your business being found? If you are not listed on Google My Business, you have no way that your business will be found easily when people are trying to drive to your restaurant. YouTube is for watching movies. Are you sure? YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. Why are your businesses not on it yet? Right? So the digital marketing fitting into the new normal give us opportunities, new opportunities. Basically, things like workflows, customer, CRM, integrated social media, showroom booking systems, and of course, funnels are play a very important part. We are talking today, we are talking about omni-channel marketing. How do you engage your audience from online to offline and offline to online? And basically, you need to plan and systemize all of this. Now, it is very important that when we talk about SEO, we talk about the digital footprint and what SEO how does SEO will bring leads, right? So the concept of digital footprint is very simple. Today, if I have a new office, I'll tell you the directions to my new office. I'll tell you the address similarly, right? And similarly, um, we map back to the, the old tales that we, are, that we grew up with, which is Hansel and Gretel. So Hansel and Gretel were afraid that they were lost in the forest. And what do they do? They peel off breadcrumbs so that to ensure that they can find their way back home. Ladies and gentlemen, today, if you have a new website, it is not only having a glitzy website, but is your website able to leave digital footprints for people to be able to find your business, right? So it all starts with the ability to know who you want to target. That is the most key important point of SEO. And this, we are talking about audience persona. For example, Samantha Holstead, she is what age, what kind of income? Is she a student? Is she uh, you know, just fresh out of work or has she worked several years? The more you know about this customer profile, the more you will be able to target the scope of your messaging to be able to research your target market better, to create a, a couple of personas that you can target and to map up important characteristics that will map to, for example, Facebook behaviors that you can target. And then you basically, you present this profile. So how to get started? Let me show you a case study. Right? Why is it important to know the preferences, know their demographics and where they hang out? And also we will know the colors and the lingo that they speak so that we can craft better and more relevant messaging to laser target the to the right platform. Now we come to a case study. Imagine all of us uh, own a satay company called the Halal Satay Company. And the Halal Satay Company wants to do a Facebook ads. So the first, you need to identify what is your primary audience identification. By identifying your primary audience, you will be able to anchor your position in the market. For example, Malays or Muslims, halal-related interests, they like satay, they like barbecue food, they like Muslim food and Muslim-related culture. Now, assuming that they have already anchored this position, then they can look at secondary audiences, which is to identify and capture new markets like people who like grab food, which is convenient food, people who like uh, food that is delivered to them, right? People who like maybe ota, ota is similar to satay. And then you can look at food pairings, for example, satay with food or drink. So make satay pairings as popular as wine and cheese. For example, maybe satay with chicken wing or satay with ribena. I'm, I'm just giving an example here, right? Satay bonds people and satay as a party food or soul food because it's comforting. 
right? So this, we have gone through an idea of how you start your and identify your audience persona. Next, the question is how do you, what do you do before you start SEO? Firstly, you need to understand the demand-based and interest-based targeting. Is SEO alone enough as a marketing strategy? What does Google do to stay relevant? Are you bucking up the wrong SEO tree? And next, we will go into getting into the mind of Google. And we will understand after this talk how exactly Google works and how exactly Google looks at your website. Right? So things that you need to consider are demand-based versus interest-based targeting. For example, SEO and Google Ads are what we call demand-based targeting because people search for specific keywords, you make sure that you are there. If people are not searching for the keywords, you are not there. Whereas Facebook ads is, they assume that just because the last year you bought a lot of dresses, maybe you have a lot of party to go to, they assume that you still like, you know, women's fashion kind of stuff. It may not be accurate, right? That's why that's the difference between demand-based uh, targeting and interest-based targeting. Next, you need to understand keywords with buying intent or strong commercial intent. For example, property agent Singapore, property Singapore, that is the worst keyword to target. New launch Singapore is the worst keyword to target. You are better off targeting executive condo near a particular street name, like uh, executive condo near Shah Alam or something or Sengkang East Way, right? SEO cannot be compartmentalized. You cannot see SEO as itself only. SEO must be part of a bigger marketing initiative, whether it's online or offline. SEO done, cannot be done blindly because you need to meet your business objectives. You need to have your sales funnel. You need to have your customer journey and you need systems in place. And also you need to comply to Personal Data Protection Act, right? And one of the concepts of SEO is this thing called it. It means expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Is your website able to demonstrate the knowledge and expertise that you or your business possess, right? And are you able to be a trusted authority over time, be a leader in the market? And do you have quality content with quality links, right? And next, of course, we look at your website needs to be secure. You need to have device compatibility and you need to have that overall page experience, which means that fast, secure, easy to use, low bounce rate, devices, uh, operating system, and browser compatibility. Right. So now we come to the very interesting part, which we will deep dive into SEO right now. So the question is, which came first, the Yahoo or the Google? Yahoo was born in 1994. Google was born in 1998. Today, who is the dominant force? It is Google. Why, Why is Google the dominant force? We will explore this. So Google decided at the get-go in 1998 to provide a more relevant information in the search queries. And in the early days, they, they, they had this indication where the more links a site links to it the better the site has in terms of authority today is no longer true later we will see how does google continue their search to be the relevant search engine of today right um google provide a more relevant search result as compared to any other search engines at that point in time and uh, Google chose to be radical. For example, in the results page, when you click on the result, Google actually show take you to the website directly. Remember, at this point in time, Yahoo was monetizing because all traffic, they still drive back to their own site so that they can show banner ads. But at this point in time, Google chose to be revolutionary. Nobody done, done that. No Google ads was invented at that point in time, but Google decided to take that risk. And that risk certainly paid off. Next, Google bought technologies to remain on top of the game. It, between the period of 2010 to 2011, 
more than one company per week, Google bought that. And basically, Google bought technologies to form Google Photos technology. Um, Google bought YouTube. Google bought technologies to form AdSense and AdWords, Google Maps, and Google Analytics. And today, if you are not on Google Photos, you are not on YouTube, then you are missing a lot. And you are not on Google Maps, you are missing a lot, right? So, which we will cover later. Next, Google made algorithm updates just because at that point in time, people decided to cheat the system. Google made the following algorithm updates. Google Panda, February 2011. Uh, Panda actually addresses the on-page content. That means the content that is on your page, Google will look at it, whether you repeat keywords a lot of time and it uh, does it make sense when the user read. So Google use a lot of artificial intelligence and Google will, will be able to know that if you are keyword stuffing or putting keywords too many times, that is keyword stuffing. So that's in a gist is Google Panda. Google Penguin looks at the off-page penalty because people are trying, going crazy, getting links, right? So Google Penguin makes sure that your links is relevant to your business. For example, your, your links, general directory sites are okay, but if your links are in medical, uh line but suddenly you've got you've got some engineering uh directory listing to you then google penguin will put a filter that means it, that that backlink is not not so important in the calculation of ranking right next we look at google pigeon google pigeon essentially looks at the local search today i'm in singapore i i i say uh uh malay food right malay food near me or something like that so previously, Google will show even a Malay food that is in Malaysia, but I'm in Singapore, that kind of thing. So Google, Google Pigeon addressed this to make sure that you are, you are in Singapore, you search Malay food, you get all the restaurants that are in Singapore so that you can come and visit them. Next, we look at Hummingbird and RankBrain. Hummingbird and RankBrain are the latest technology, 2013 to 2015. Hummingbird looks at tries to understand more on the search intent. For example, if you key in these keywords, are you generally, generally browsing or uh, do you have intention to buy? And based on that, Hummingbird will actually serve the right website to you. And RankBrain looks at never handled before search. For example, today you are a property agent and you are launching a new property. Uh, the market doesn't know this property name yet. So rank brain will, will take over and make sense of it first, right? So as you can see, why are Google buying technology and why are Google making algorithm changes? It's because the moment Google loses to be relevant, Google uh, Yahoo will take over. And that's why Google is able to be relevant today, right? Hey, Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've been instructed by the team to let you know that you have roughly another two to three minutes. Okay, right. Okay, all right, all right. thanks. No problem. So are you bucking uh, the wrong SEO tree? Uh, basically, you must know that if you are market to everyone, you do, do not uh, market to anyone at all. So let's go, go down. SEO keyword. Uh, process is what we said that the keywords are basically you need to know what are the buying keywords, right? And getting into the mind of Google, basically when Google step in into your website, they, they will actually look at whether your website is topical, it has authority, it is contextual in nature, and it has the relevancy, right? And a good website should have a good hosting, internal on-page factors that you are basically optimizing and off-page factors and you need tracking and statistics right and next we come to the on-page so basically when you're optimizing uh, content for on-page you make sure that your keywords you do not repeat too many times you have the keywords in the title you, you make sure you name your images uh, and all that so let's look at a, a, a live example so basically this is an example of uh, what I have ranked for my client, which is wedding ice sculpture. 
And basically, as you can see, knowing, looking at the technology that Google has bought, um, I have listed in Google My Business, which will appear in Google Maps. I have listed on YouTube here, which the, which the YouTube video actually appears. And basically, I have listed images as well for the client. So basically, the images has the company branding, right? And, and there's also basically organic listing here, right? So if SEO is done right, basically 16 million results, you are able to rank on uh, Google page one. So let me just uh, cover the just a few slides. I'll, I'm, I'm going to skip some of my slides, right? Um, just hold on. Okay, so immediate tips on how you can improve your SEO is this basically your domain and hosting. You try to host in the same country that your business has. Uh, make sure you have keyword in domain for competitive key. Uh, niches is, is important. You need to have an SSL. Your website, there's a balance between beautiful images and load speed. Make sure it's loading well. Mobile optimization, make sure, right? Uh, content optimization, always write with the readers in mind. Make sure that your content is topical and uh, contextual as well. List your business in Google My Business, right? And video optimization, make sure that you upload your video on YouTube. And basically uh social media and images make sure that you study where your client is at and and basically have the presence there especially on google photos as well right uh next we look at some of the emerging uh trends that you need to look at not pertaining to seo instant messaging bots go live technology and being able to analyze your data right your prospect is out there Make sure you know how to follow them in the rest of the social media as well, right? If not, you become irritating like an old friend. They decide to call each other. So the friend thought that, oh, you want to have coffee, but you want to uh, kind of sell insurance, right? <laughs> yeah. So please don't overdo it. Okay, I'm done uh, with my talk. Unfortunately, I, I, I need to rush through. Uh, so sorry about that. Right. Uh, and basically, this is my free gift to you. You can join my community to learn more about internet marketing. All right. Thank you, Jean. And in fact, I think we should also be apologizing. Uh, apologizing. I'm sorry that we didn't have enough time to accommodate the, the whole presentation. Okay. But uh, with that being said, how do we get in touch with you? So uh, for everyone who's like watching in uh, Zoom right now on Facebook, how do we get in touch with you? If you could just leave your credentials in the chat box or you oh, can yeah. display them okay. on screen. That'd be great. Okay. Uh... So one of the one of the things that you can get in touch with me is you can join uh, my Telegram group, which is uh, t.me slash SEO for B. That means SEO for business, right? SEO for B, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or you can uh, you can connect uh, me in LinkedIn. That is linkedin.com forward slash I N forward slash I M S E O King, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like, type it in the I love, yeah, absolutely. I love how that's your branding. I, I absolutely love it. Um, Eugene, thank you so much for being a part of the Singapore Website Awards. And I, I think we had a very good chat just now. I am uh, pleased to meet you and I hope to see you again in the future. Thank you so much. And uh, to everyone else who's watching, let's give him a virtual round of applause. Eugene, thank you have you. a great day and feel free to stay on with us. Yep. Okay, thank you, Eugene. Bye. Thanks. All right, you guys, so we are going to be proceeding with the next uh, winner announcement. Now, this is for the site of the month. We're going to be moving to, uh, into our month of July to December. And of course, this is still for our commercial category. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we can actually just proceed that site. Our winner for the month of July, innovativehub.com.sg by Innovative Hub. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Good work there. And of course, 
Might I just add on to what I was saying earlier that the recipients for this particular uh, award will actually be receiving $500 worth of XFights credits as well. Now, for the month of August, we have gramvideos.com by Gram. Moving forward for the month of September, our winner is printysg.com by PrintySG Private Limited. Phenomenal job, you guys. Congratulations. Now for the month of October, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our virtual hands together for parentsguide.asia by Stefan Yeo. Hi, Lao Ying Tim. Hi, Stefan. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. everyone. Yep. Congratulations. Go ahead. Thank you. Let's uh, hear your acceptance speech. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, x for this award. Uh, I'm honoured to be uh, recognised for the work done to our website. Um, when I first started out, uh, I actually made a decision that turned out to be quite important, and uh, that is to host our website with a web hosting company instead of using a uh, free service like Wix or like some people you know, put their online presence uh, on Facebook as a business page. Um, the reason is actually very simple because I realized that uh, if you build your business on somebody else's backyard, any change to the terms and conditions may have a negative impact on how you conduct your business. So for instance, if you violate the terms and condition, you may get banned. Worse is that the platform they go out of business entirely. Um, so while, while it's very easy to put up a website these days, um, it's important for you to do some thinking about how you want to sustain or grow it because you don't want to run into blocks and be forced to start over. So uh, thank you once again, uh, and I hope to see everyone uh, in, the, in the near future in a COVID-free world. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Stefan. Congratulations once again. And I think you gave really good advice. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of November, our winner is cmrelocation.com by CM Relocation. Congratulations once again. And finally, for the month of December, our winner is tjg.sg by tjg print congratulations once again to tjg.sg by tjg print a winner for the month of december It seems we're having a little bit of a technical issue here, you guys. Uh, apologies for that. Let's give our team a few seconds to iron that out. In the meantime, I, when I just say that once again, uh, the recipients for this award will actually be taking home a prize of uh, $500 worth of Exabytes credits. And of course, while you're here, let me just keep you guys company. Uh, remember, once again, you can always ask questions for our speakers at any point in time. You can just uh, click on the Q&A button. It's right beneath your screen. And of course, make them as detailed as you like. And of course, do feel free to share this live stream with your friends, your family, uh, your co-workers. Basically, we're going to be pasting the chat, uh, the link to uh, our live stream right now in the chat. And of course, if you take any screenshots or photos from our ceremony, don't forget to uh, tag us on our Facebook page. That's Singapore Website Awards with the hashtag SWA. Exabytes and Grow Digital. Okay, so I guess we're back and we are up and running. That's great. Okay, so congratulations once again to all our winners for the site of the month for our commercial categories. Let's give them a virtual round of applause. Great job, you guys. We'll be announcing the winners of the personal category next. And right now, we're going to be speaking to the director of Chile Bin of Web Design, Sean Nicole. And we're going to be talking about building the perfect service business website. Hey, Sean, come on through. Hey, hey, how are you? Hi, I'm good. And how are you? How's your week been so far? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. It's all good. All good over here, nice and warm, which is good. <laughs> wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful to hear. So, Sean, whenever you're ready, just go ahead and set up your... And I'll be here. Cool. Let me just change to this one. 
Absolutely. Either one should be all okay. Yep, all good. So whenever you're ready, the screen is yours. Take it away. And if you need me, I'll be here. Yeah, cool. No worries. All right. Thanks for that. Look, um, we don't have a lot of time for this, so I'm kind of going to run through building um, the perfect service-based business website. So it's kind of tiered mainly towards sort of um, agencies, so web design agencies or anyone that really has some type of service that they want to promote on the web. And, and there's something that we can kind of follow, and there's a few things from there um, in terms of workflow that we can follow when we build. We build our sites for our clients this way. Um, and there's a bit of methodology behind it as well, which you run through. But quickly, there's a little bit about me. My name is Sean. I've been in Singapore for a very long time. Um, I spoke at uh, WordCamp KL probably a couple of years ago now as well. So some you you might have seen me there. And I'm also heavily involved in the WordPress community here in Singapore as well, and run a web design agency here in Singapore called Julie with Web Design. Right. So um, we just have a couple of points to go across today. So what is the purpose for user flow? And then we'll talk about the four things that the best home pages do. So what is a purposeful user flow? So a purposeful user flow is an intentional flow of information with a well-defined direction that crucially does not involve your visitor having to sort of jump around backwards and forwards to the navigation in order to find everything that they need to know. What that means is the website does all its work for you and, you know, the user should be able to essentially browse the website, get everything that they need to know with a minimal amount of sort of thinking or, or navigation. So for service-based businesses, an ideal purpose for user flow begins at home. Um, it directs people to like a positioning page which typically would be an about page, then to focus services pages. Um, if you do have case studies, testimonials, then those can be good to show use cases. And then final, finally, to a call to action. Um, if you don't have use cases, then blogs can kind of work to, to back that up as well. So this is kind of what the, the, the user flow looks like. So right, so it begins at the home page, directs people to a positioning page, which is the capabilities page there. It directs people again to the case studies or the services page, and then finally to a call to action. So you can see that those blue sections are essentially driving people throughout the, the whole kind of funnel, right? So um, the homepage banner will drive them to about the, um, the list of capabilities or services. Um, the services will drive them to a specific service page, let's say web design. That web design page will link them to a case study, and then that case study will link them to some type of checkout or call to action page. So, um, it works for a number of reasons, right? So um, you can capture unfif unfamiliar visitors who know nothing about your website or your brand's offering uh, and purposefully guide them through your funnel. So because um, it widens as they move through it, so you've, you've induced them a whole new bunch of key pieces of information uh, at exactly right, the right time. So you're not giving them too much information. Um, you're just kind of giving them what they need as, as they go along. So your goal is to make the best use of a visitor's attention and a very, um, which is a very limited resource, right? So a user study shows for the first time visitors um, interpret the purpose of a web page and decides whether or not to continue or to read or to interact with it within 10 seconds. Now, I probably think it's probably a little bit less than that nowadays. I think you probably got three to five seconds um, for, for you to sort of make sure that um, you're getting their attention and providing them with the value that they've come for. So it might be wise to think about that as a maximum amount of time that you have to capture. So 10 seconds is the maximum amount of time. And if you only have that 10 seconds with a prospect, what would you want them to know? That's what your website has to tell people straight away. So if you're in the elevator with someone or if you're um, you know, talking to someone down the street, you've only got a finite amount of information with them what would you really want them to know about your business and how, and how you can help them? So those things need to take the first priority um, when you design your homepage. So it's why I recommend a purposeful user flow. So, and making sure that your positioning is the most important information on your homepage. So this is uh, about who you are, what you can do and how you can help people. So it's priority should be abundantly clear for a first time visitor, should be simple, it should be concisely articulated, and it should be accompanied by a prominent and clear call to action um, for people to go deeper within their website. 
So by quickly and efficiently um, redirecting the first time visitors from a positioning focused message on the homepage to a subpage dedicated to your company's capabilities. Um, so you can do that by beginning to, you can, sorry, you can begin to properly orient that visitor, guiding them through a greater understanding of your business and through the process of a prospect qualification, right? Because not everyone is going to be the right client for you. So you want to make sure that uh, they know that you're a good company for them, but also that uh, you know that they're a good client for you. So you need to qualify that prospect. And you can do that by making sure that they follow a few simple steps, right? If they can't follow those steps, then um, they're probably not the right client for you, right? Because if you're working in a technical space, they're not going to necessarily understand all that information um, as you go through your web design process. Uh, so from a capabilities landing page, um, you could read more detailed explanation of what your business does, though this is essentially what you do, who you serve, and why you do it. So they should then be guided to one of two new steps, digging further into a discrete service or contacting you. So they may have decided that, okay, you're the right company for them. I don't need to know anymore. You should give them the ability to get in contact with you easily as well. You don't necessarily have to drive them down that, that cycle, but uh, you should give them two options, right? Get in contact with you or digging further. So they may not be ready to, to take action so they can dig in further into your site. So a service landing page um, typically describes one of your discrete services, right? So it's web design, web development, SEO, um, social content, media, marketing, any of those type of services, right? From an agency point of view, it could be, um, yeah, it could be anything, right? So this may be one step in a necessary set of services that compromise uh, comprise your ideal client engagement, right? Or it may be served just one straight service. Either way, it should explain the purpose, um, the service's purpose or goals and how it relates to them and also any possible outcomes as well. So from that, the visitor should be guided to one of two new steps. So that's learning about the impact of your work. So your core services need to be explained by and rooted in your own landing page. They should also offer the value proposition and be proven by another piece of content as well. And that's typically a case study. And that uh, exists to frame the problem that your service uh, solves and then describe the form that that solution takes and proves its worth by documenting some type of results. So following the sort of problem solution outcome formula, where possible prioritize the outcomes over everything else. If you write them like that, then, then they will come, right? So a visitor should be guided towards one of two new steps, contacting you to discuss further or learning more about um, your additional services and what, and what promises that you will deliver. And then obviously make contact as well. So the reason number two that it works is it allows you to capture people who are actively researching and who may have found other content outside the realm of your homepage. Not everyone's going to come directly from Google or from a search engine directly to your homepage and follow this as well. But if they see, do jump into, a, into one of your pages, then you can direct them back to the homepage and then to follow that, that flow as well. So user data shows that when a visitors enter a website on a lower level page, blog post, case study, white paper, webinar, whatever, they follow a predictable pattern, right? And this predictable pattern essentially means that they'll scan the content of the page, decide whether or not it's relevant for them, then either read it or leave. If they decide to stay, then they'll follow links to related content or, or get in touch with you. So the reason that this flow works is it prevents them from losing focus and abandoning their site or being caught in a content loop. So many eyeballs are coming here into one of their case study pages. And typically what they would do is they'll click back to the home page and then follow that flow all the way through to make contact. So the reason three that it works is that you can include calls to actions at multiple points along that funnel. You're not just waiting till they get to the final stage. They can jump off it at any point of time. So they can jump off straight from the home page, straight from your about page, straight from your services page straight from your case study page, you know, you want to make sure that they have every opportunity to do that. 
And each step of this flow should have clearest call to action um, directly related to that purpose of content as well and where they are in the buying cycle. So I won't go through this. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, this buying cycle stuff, and I can send these slides around later. Um, but yeah, there's the awareness, consideration, convincing stage and things as well. So each page on your website should essentially um, target one of these audience cycles. So the purpose for user flow is more than a purposeful arrangement of pages and calls to action. It requires a specific approach to design. So we'll go through some uh, four things that home pages do um, to make sure it's all right. So your home page exists uh, not to excite or entertain the audience. It exists to attract, inform, and engage your future clients. So the best way to do this is not fill the screen with moving images. Um, for videos and things like that, but to follow a simple strategic outline, which can be handled with text alone if you're uh, if you're good enough at it. But essentially, what we, we like to do is, you know, the top section is what you do, so what promises you have. The second section would be what you've done or what results you have. This could be case studies, blogs. This could the next thing will be some type of social proof or testimonials. And then what what you say or your expertise, which will be, you know, any blog articles or uh, or your services. And we'll kind of dig into that a little bit. So what is this? So what you do, this is your positioning, your promise. Ideally, um, you're able to say what you do, horizontal positioning, um, and then for whom you can do it for, which is vertical um, positioning. So your main goal is to guide a future client to take the next step. So, um, this is a pretty good one. So high quality, beautiful WordPress websites at an affordable price. So you know exactly um, what solution that they're providing and you know how to get involved with them um, really easily. Here's another one as well. So single grains and agency out of the US. This is an old version of the website, but helping great companies grow their revenues online. So you know exactly um, who they're targeting from that. So the next step is what you've done. So what results, this is your work, your results. So case studies, your best, most positioning relevant work. So um, if you're attracting, you know, uh, restaurants, then you want to put your restaurants up in there. If you're attracting healthcare, then you want to put your healthcare uh, examples in there as well. You just need to be brief and then they can dig in further if they want to, but they need to see kind of themselves or their own brand or their own businesses in your website. So a couple of examples on how you can sort of present this as well. So you can see here that the branding is the mission to seafarers, but the most kind of prevalent text here is complete website overhaul for global charity. So while it's important that it's done for mission to seafarers, you can see that they've branded that to say, you know, we have done this work, a complete website overhaul for a global charity. So you know that they work kind of on a larger scale. There's a nice looking screenshot of it, and then they can download the case study and go to another page. This is another one from uh, a website I really love called Purple Bunny. Um, and you can see that, again, message media is small, but a website application for a mobile messaging company. And then you can say we handle design, front end development and things. So it's not giving too much away, but you can see that the work looks quite nice. They've designed a style guide and they can view the case study to, to dig in more. Um, what your clients say, this is testimonial, social proof, a satisfied client will always be a better salesperson than you will be. So let them speak for you. So it, this, if you do have any videos or you can get a client on a Zoom call to do videos, then it's great to have a video testimonial. Um, so direct a visitor from the homepage to read that case study. And if you have a case study with a testimonial on it, that's good as well because it links everything together. So this is a good example of, of kind of what they can do. Um, so this is an agency called Bigger Picture, but you know it just kind of frames that really nicely. It fits in with their design. Uh, it's quite simple. You can also present them um, like this. this is the revamped single grain website. So they have a number of them here, but they're all designed quite nice. They're all a relatively same size. They've got photos, which can always be a little bit hard to get depending on how you work with your companies. But yeah, just needs to be nice and simple. And then this is what you say. There's, this is evidence of your expertise in the form of blogs, white papers, webinars, videos, podcasts, news. Um, so many companies like to put this at the top of the site because it looks like it's dynamic and it's changing. 
rather than it being static. But most people won't really visit your website a lot of times, right? Um, that if they are visiting it, they're coming direct into content rather than direct into the homepage and saying, what's new on this company's website, right? People are looking for a specific service. So this is a shameless plug of an uh, of my site here, which is um, which is an old screenshot now. But you can see that there's four articles here. There's an Instagram post and a Twitter post that comes into it as well. So people can immediately see um, this is what we're about. There's another agency, so you can see that there's you know they're blogging relatively recently as well, three in October, one in September. And then what happens next, right? Make it as easy as you can for them to get in contact with you. This is a pretty simple form. And then what most companies will do this from Colodo. This is uh, an agency out of the UK. Um, they'll follow up with probably a longer questionnaire later down the track. So get them in as soon as possible. Um, this is another one from Purple Bunny. So like I was saying, once you come to the bottom of the site, you can see here that um, about us or get in touch are the two options that you can get to uh, from here. Um, however, sort of nothing about this design should stand in the way of good design necessarily. Um, you still want to make sure that it looks good. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but you need to include those sections. So if you clearly communicate these concepts and maintain their order of priority, and if your creative choices don't compromise that in any way, then go for your life. You can be as creative as you want. Sky is the limit. So this recommended outline style only to your homepage doesn't have to be taken literally, right? So there's nothing wrong with embracing the visual nature of, of what we do as designers and developers. So go nuts without compromising the business purpose. So it doesn't necessarily have to be presented all this way. You may want to do tables, you may want to do columns, you may want to do um, a row listing of specific services. As long as you have the right information in here, visually it doesn't really matter, just have the hierarchy right. Um, but they're both positioned to prioritize the communication of positioning. Um, so this is an example of, of showing your services. And, and that's it, that's me. Um, hopefully, I know there's a lot to go through, we didn't have a lot of time. Um, but yeah, hopefully that um, that helped with a few uh, few questions and uh, in terms of how we build websites um, and how you know you can look at approaching uh, service based business websites. Absolutely, and thank you for that, Sean. Uh, to everyone else who's watching right now, let's give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you so much. It was a phenomenal presentation. Uh, we currently don't have any questions right now, but um, in case cool. people do, I suppose they can. Uh, get through to you with your credentials on screen right now? Or is there any other way we can get in touch with you? Yeah, look, the stuff on, on screen is fine. And I'll, I'll share a link to these slides as well in the chat, just if anyone wants to get in touch. But I'm, I'm usually around. All right, great. Well, Sean, I think we'll wrap things up right now. So thank you once again sure. for being part of the Singapore Website Awards. It's been nice to talk to you. Have a great day. And feel free to stay on with us. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Bye. All right, you guys. So right now we're going to be proceeding with the winner announcement for the site of the month awards. This time for the personal uh, website owned category this and for the month of January to December. So let's just dive right in and go right at it because the recipients for this particular category will be taking home a prize. Once again, it's five hundred dollars worth of Exabytes credits. Let's go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. For the month of March, our winner is ChrisChu.com by Priscilla Chu. Hey Priscilla, congratulations. Thank you so much to Ixabytes for the recognition and hard work. I'm very honored to be receiving this award. And you guys did a tremendous job to put this together in the middle of a pandemic. So my blog, um, priscu.com was started because of my love for running. And I basically wanted to have a way to chronicle my running journey and share my experiences. So I basically started the site and today it has evolved not only from a running blog, but also a food and lifestyle blog. And I'm proud of the way it's progressed. So thank you again to Ixabytes. Absolutely. I'm proud you should be. Congratulations once again, Priscilla. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we hope to see more submissions from you next year. 
Thank you. All right. You have a great day now. Bye. <laughs> okay, you guys. For the month of April, our winner is musicphotolife.com by Chesa Tan. Hey, Chester, congratulations. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Exabyte, for the award. Uh, I've been blogging for more than 10 years, and my site has evolved from a web blog in its literal sense to a more professional site where I share uh, product reviews and recommendations to readers. Uh, so I've heard about this Singapore Website Awards about two years ago, but I, back then I thought my website wasn't good enough for submission. So then last year, I felt I was ready. So I submitted and to try my luck. And so to my surprise, I won side of the, uh, the month. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, very grateful for, to receive this award to recognize the quality of my website. Uh, and I appreciate the SWA for running this award program for so many years. So I finally got a chance to win it. Yeah, thank you, Exabyte. Thanks. Two thumbs up. Congratulations, Chester. Absolutely amazing. All right, moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of May, our winner is EasyTravelRecipes.com by Chin Jian Hao. Congratulations! Up next for the month of June, our winner is FerdalShazwani.com by Muhammad Ferdal Shazwani. Here we go for the month of August. Congrats goes out to MissChichi.com by Chichi. Uh, hi. Hi. Congrats. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for the award. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay, no problem at all. Short and simple. Okay, Congratulations again, once you. again. Hmm. Okay, you guys. For the month of October, our winner is acrylicpouring.com by Acrylic Pouring. For the month of November, congratulations goes out to Terrace.sg by Terrace. And finally, for the month of December, the site of the month, a uh, winner for the month of December once again is LaptopFaster.com by LaptopFaster. And a big fat congratulations to you guys. A phenomenal job right there. We hope to see more submissions from you guys next year. Okay, we will now be moving on with our third presentation for today. We're going to be talking about how to get your website aligned with your sales funnel. And we are going to be speaking with the founder and CEO of Memento, Sindhira Burhat. Please welcome to the screen, Mr. Salia Wisana. Hi, Salia. Hi, hi, Lauren. How are you? We Hello. Yes, we meet again in the span of two weeks, I guess. I'm yes, doing great. How right. are you? Good, good. Uh, not too bad. Thanks. Let me. I'm guessing uh, the view from your place is just as beautiful. No change there. Yes, same view. <laughs> Absolutely envious. <laughs> okay, Celia. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and share your slides. Sure. Yeah. Okay, you guys. For those of you who are watching, once again, if you have any questions for him, just go ahead and leave them in the Q and A box. You know, make them as detailed as lengthy. Actually, you know, just just really make it detailed because that helps us understand your perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you guys see my screen? Not yet. We're still waiting. Okay. Let 
And of course, while we're waiting for Mr. Salia to set up his screen here, uh, once again, if you have taken any photos or screenshots, don't forget to share them and tag us on Facebook. Now, that's Singapore Website Awards. It's our Facebook page. And don't forget to include the hashtags FWA2020, Exabytes, and Grow Digital. Okay, Salia, I can see your screen. So right now, you just need to put it in full screen mode. Okay, cool. And there we go. Okay, all good. Cool. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. So uh, thanks again for having me around. Um, so what I'll do is I'll talk to you guys about um, uh, how to get your website sort of aligned with your sales um, and also the marketing funnels. Uh, just a quick intro about myself. So I founded a couple of companies. One is a, a MarTech company called Momentro, uh, based in Malaysia. And then um, another marketing services company called Infection, uh, coming out of Sri Lanka. And then um, I've been uh, getting a couple of awards. So was awarded as the 50 most, one of the 50 most influential marketers a few years ago. I was also into it marketing star award winner, really passionate about um, lecturing, sharing my knowledge. So I do some part-time lecturing at uh, Plymouth and in certain other universities, uh, really passionate about technology and um, also marketing. So can kind of define myself as a tech marketer. Uh, so I'll straight away jump into things. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll maybe take you through some of the, the theory, so to speak, and also some real life examples of how this has come into practice. Uh, before doing anything, um, I think you need to get your funnel right. So when I speak to most business owners or most marketers, uh, what I hear is, uh, okay, I know my funnel. But do you really, you know, you need to really define your funnel. What are your objectives based on um, some of the key success factors, some of the business trends, where you're doing business? This can change. Don't go into like a real basic funnel. Uh, sometimes you need to figure out whether it's a funnel that you need to look at. I'll, I'll explain to you why, what I mean by that later on. Um, and the other thing you need to figure out is who's your ideal customer? Um, Sometimes in business, you know, we tend to go behind uh, leads, but who is the ideal lead for us? Uh, we need to look at the back end of it, whether we can support it. So these are things that you need to think about before you start setting up your site for success and also aligning with your website. Uh, you also need to figure out where these uh, potential customers or potential leads are. What are they looking for? So these are some of the questions that you need to understand before you align your um, sales or marketing funnel with your site. Um, the funnel is about 100 years old. It's a very old way of looking at things. But most businesses and most marketers, uh, they still love it, uh, mainly because of the ease of use. So you can actually look at it from an um, operating point of view or even from a reporting standpoint. Uh, even the finance people, they love it. So you can report things according to that. But the funnel is changing mainly because our customers are changing. So uh, we need to adopt uh, more of a lifestyle or a life cycle model as opposed to a funnel model. Um, again, like I said, it's mainly because our buyers are very, very complicated now. Um, and we can't accurately predict where a lead is. You know, if you take a funnel, uh, sometimes in um, if you take FMCG, I actually have an example later on. People come to your funnel at various points. You know, it's not just at the awareness stage. Sometimes, you know, they just straight away come to the middle of uh, the funnel and start transacting. So you need to be prepared for this unpredictability of things. That's what we call it nowadays. And um, a lot of the conversions happen after a conversation. So it can be an online chat, it can be a telephone call to an account manager, it can be a band qualifying call, whatever it is, uh, conversations lead to conversions. So this whole conversational commerce part actually comes into play. And I think it's time that we brought those in as KPIs also. So you have your typical awareness, interest, decision, and then the bottom where you have the loyalty side. but um, you need to treat this not as a funnel, but more as a life cycle where you need to understand who your ideal customers are, what is the, the life cycle they want to spend. Obviously, you, you have Google Analytics to help you out, but if you're starting from scratch, you won't have data. 
So where do you start? So that's why you need to make some assumptions, look at some external data, figure out how are you going to align your KPIs, your objectives, or your funnel to your website. Uh, one of the starting points that I always go for is the buyer personas. Again, this is not something new, but there are certain changes that has happened here. So back in the day, we used to create this for our ideal customer, which is still true. But um, we need to uh, ideally put a face to the name, figure out who our ideal buyers are. And we need to also know who we don't want. That is very important. This is where sales and marketing really need to align themselves. Uh, this is where the disparity happens. But this is where you really need to spend some time, figure out um, who you don't want, as well as who your ideal customer is, and then align. So you actually put a face to the name, so to speak. Figure out, not just say that I want to target somebody within the age range of 25 to 35, but actually somebody who has a lifestyle like this, who um, interacts with brands like this, who lives like this. So go much more deeper into your customer uh, or potential customer. Understand um, who these personas are. Um, whilst we all talk about leads, you know, everybody, all businesses, they want leads, but people tend to forget the nurturing part. Um, just because we made eye contact today doesn't mean we are pretty serious, right? So I know it's a joke, but that is the truth. You know, you, just because somebody comes to your website does not mean they become leads or they don't convert. So you need to nurture them. Um, by nurturing, what I mean is, you know, uh, we need to start talking to them, trying to understand what they need. Um, and buyers nowadays, they have this massive fear of missing out because there's a lot of choices. So there is... Um, this behavioral economics concept, you know, there is something called choice overload, uh, which actually applies to the whole of the internet as well. You know, there's a lot of stuff to be looked at and people don't want to miss out on things. Maybe B2B, even B2C, people want to get the best out of it. So how do you actually facilitate a conversation like that? Again, the conversation come, uh, part comes in and you need to keep in touch. And Good KPIs nowadays even have chat to conversion rates, not just your typical um, top of the funnel conversion, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, that's still there. But then you need to sort of dissect a little bit in, figure out how you're gonna measure these chat to conversions um, and various other KPIs that might be helpful for you um, in order to figure out how to align your sales with your site. Uh, there's a few more stuff that you need to also think of, which is basically getting your house in order. Uh, first thing is you need to make sure Google sees you. Um, as you know, um, you need to target people who have the right intent. You know, the cliched word is um, your low hanging fruit. You know, how do you target them? Um, obviously, you know, you need to get yourself ranked up on Google for the right keywords. Right, And I think I mentioned this some time ago also. Um, there's something called the core web vitals that have come in, I think from May onwards, it's gonna come, uh, where Google is actually, you know, all of us know our site has to be mobile friendly because lots of people watch things, um, buy things, um, consume things on mobile. So we know that. We know um, we need to make the site secure and safe so that in the person or the buyer's mind, they know they are going into a secure environment. Um, we can't have any intrusive interstitials or pop-ups or updates. Google doesn't like it. We know that. But there are three key things that are going to come out, which is called core web vitals. Basically, it's your LCP, uh, FID, and your CLS. Um, so these three items, the loading speed, the interactivity, and the visual stability, these three signals are going to be very important in the future start reading about it uh, because it's going to be very important. A Google study um, of over millions of pages uh, and impressions found that a site meets, uh, when a site meets the recommended threshold for the core web vitals, users are at least 24% less likely to abandon a page as well. So getting your house in order is something you need to do at the point where you start to develop the site as well. I think like the previous speaker said, 
it's good to have a really nice looking site, but if Google can't see it, or you know, if you if you can't be found, then there's no point. The other thing is you need to figure out the meta tags um, on your page uh, because that is what defines who you are. You know, that's what Google sees. That's what people will eventually see after Google ranks you up. So, you know, you go to a website, look at how the meta names, meta descriptions, uh, the properties, how are they structured? It, does it have the right keywords? Um, and nowadays you can't just stuff keywords. You need to have a proper description in proper English or whatever the language you use. So, you know, you need to figure out that um, and get your house in order. That's one of the key things that you need to do uh, once you figure out your personas. Um, there's something new that's coming up. Uh, well, I say new, but it's been there. So voice search, all of us use it. Uh, I think a few years ago, 20% was the number given by Google for global search happening through voice, but I'm sure it's increasing now. So, um, you know, by 2023, um, we are going to see about 8 billion searches happening. So we need to be ready for it. How do people speak? How do people type? You need to be very contextual. Some text-based searches might be one to three words, but voice searches will be long tail. So you need to kind of get this house in order part um, done at the start so that um, uh, once you start running campaigns, uh, generating leads, you come up for the right reasons and also your conversion rates are quite high. And uh, just one more thing in terms of this, um, this there's some data that I got from Google. So um, if you have a page uh, and if you start optimizing it, it, it can be a website, it can be your conversion pages, it can be your awareness pages, content pages, whichever it is. If you increase uh, certain things, a little bit, you see massive um, outputs from it. For example, uh, if your page load time goes from one second to three seconds, your bounce rate will increase by 32%, which is not good. If it increases from one to five seconds, it goes up to 90. If it goes from one to 10 seconds, it goes up to one, two, three percent or 123 percent. So this is the kind of impact you can reverse that and see, you know, if you reduce from 10 to one, it'll reduce the same amount uh, of bounds. So, so think accordingly, uh, or think about the technical side of the site also, before you go into a lot of creative heavy, because that uh, is important as well. Um, and don't be content with the content that you have. Uh, you need to align content with sales goals and your custom objectives. The, the funnel that I have here, um, you know, your typical funnel will start from awareness, um, then getting them to act, consider, and then convert. But in this case, there's a lot more depth in here. You know, once they come into the site, they're not going to buy immediately. They want to familiarize themselves. Then you need to capture the user intent. Some people who know what they want might search for something direct they might come to a different part of the funnel. How do you measure that? Um, then certain people, especially in B2B, nowadays the evaluation part happens as a team or as a committee. You know, if you're selling an enterprise software, um, one person won't have the authority to buy it. It'll be an evaluation committee. So do you have the right white papers, the webinars, the podcasts that these people are looking for? Um, you know, do you have that content? And then uh, at the bottom, you know, in order to get people to convert, do you have the right tools to push them? Data will play an important part, but you know, it's no point having data if you can't create any contextual insights out of it. So that's why you need to marry your data, look at your funnel, break it down as much as possible, figure out the ideal funnel for you. Um, there are certain things that you can do. You can map the intent of your potential audience Look at your Google search console. What are people searching for in your domain? Does your content align to that? Is your funnel aligned with that? Um, you know, at the end of the day, you have to make your customers' lives easier because there is a ton of content out there. And I think the, the confusion rates are really high. So it's a matter of uh, being clear, very objective driven, aligning your content to what your uh, consumer is searching for. And obviously at the end of the day, you need to hit your KPIs. 
So uh, leads is an important part. So, you know, that's the keyword for sales, uh, sales guys. So we have a few case studies uh, uh, from some of the clients that we work with. So we work with Honeywell in Malaysia uh, quite closely. And obviously Honeywell is a very B2B kind of a space. Um, they wanted to, uh, they had a few solutions, um, especially uh, that worked well with the post pandemic scenario. So the timing was right. So what we did was we looked at a um, lead gen approach that combined web as well as offsite, uh, basically through the digital channels itself. So how we aligned the funnel was we looked at offsite leads and onsite leads. Um, timing, like I said, was very crucial because this campaign was around helping enterprises to get their staff to return to work safely. So it kind of married nicely with the the objective of the campaign. We wanted to get the messaging right. Um, and then um, we wanted to create the content funnel right. So we identified certain types of content that worked well, and we started uh, pushing it through various channels and it worked extremely well. Um, this is another client that we work with. It's a pharmaceutical company called MSD. Um, again, like, um, for pharmaceutical or pharma marketing, you can't market um, a solution again because it's against certain rules so we need to talk about the cause so here what we've done is we've gone a little bit deeper because when you market through a proxy or a third party site um, you need to have different kpis so here what i've mentioned is how do you educate your customer uh, how do you convert them and then how do you educate and convert could there be crossovers so the kpis for each of these will be different if you're driving traffic from social ads, um, you know, it can differ uh, where people will come to kind of figure out things. When you drive SEM or search ads, the intent is higher. So you know they're going to convert uh, at certain points. Um, so your KPIs should be accordingly. So here what we've done is we've looked at what people are searching in English. What are they searching uh, in Malay? What are the numbers? Do they tally with the sales? So did a big exercise like that to figure out how to align this particular third party or proxy funnel to the site. Um, this is actually a company in Sri Lanka called Kiehl's. They are, a, they are one of the biggest supermarket chains in the island. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting challenge. They have a massive offline presence. So the brick and mortar business is much higher than the online business, but online is now taking over. So how do you marry the two? So this is actually a screenshot from Google Analytics. So whilst they come into certain pages, this is why I said at the start, people don't do things uh, in a linear way anymore. The, the funnels are kinked. They will come to the site at certain points. They will, some people just come in and they might just buy one item and go away. Some people go all the way to the cart and they drop off. And some people get their advice or information online and go buy offline. So you need to marry the two. Right. So what we've done here is we've actually uh, looked at their loyalty program and also we've created certain types of codes from the from the POS system. And we've got that data fed into Google Analytics. So now we kind of know uh, what the buyer does online and offline, and especially when you drive campaigns online, how much of an impact that has offline as well. So, so it's an interesting case study where we kind of uh, married the offline and online funnels and uh, looked at how we drive things through an e-commerce platform. Um, and finally, um, keep a link, you, uh, all of you guys know, what happened after the pandemic was there was a lot of boom. There was a lot of discussion about software buying. People were investing in software, but the hardware part was kind of forgotten. So TP Link wanted to explore uh, the education industry. So we worked with them on a lead gen campaign which was more of an account-based marketing campaign or an ABM campaign, where we looked at certain accounts they wanted to be in. The main catalyst was actually their site. We also added in an additional competition kind of thing where uh, there was a makeover for their institute. Um, so again, messaging needs to be key. Your targeting needs to be spot on. And I think timing is also key. So um, this approach actually really worked well for, for TP Link as well. So um, that's about it from me. Um, so just want to leave a few thoughts before I go. Um, you know, like I said, buyer journeys are kinked. Um, they don't follow a linear path anymore. 
but you know we need to maximize the probability of someone showing up at our front door and we need to maximize the probability of us ending up uh, by solving the problems they have um, so that's it from me if you have any questions i'm more than happy to answer we actually have one question in the q a box right now so the question is Hi, Salia. Is the sales funnel applicable for B2B or is it only for B2C? It's actually uh, applicable for both uh, B2B as well as B2C. Uh, it depends on how you market or how you go to market. For example, in B2B, you might want somebody to download a white paper, attend a webinar and that kind of stuff. But B2C, most likely, uh, you might want them to go and maybe get an offer or do some action on social that kind of thing. So it really depends, but definitely both the funnel, uh, the, the funnel concept uh, is applicable for both. All right, fantastic. And I think with that, we can wrap our session here. A absolutely remarkable presentation. Uh, you got some compliments in the chat right now. So thank you so much, Salia. It's always a joy to talk to you. You guys have given me a virtual round of applause. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks, and guys. I'll see Take you. Care. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, bye. Okay, you guys, so we're going to be moving on with the winner announcement for the Site of the Month Awards for the e-commerce category for the month of January to December. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of February, our winner is wonderfulmilk.com by Wonderful Milk Private Limited. <laughs> Now, of course, our representatives couldn't join us here in person. So let's take a quick look at their uh, 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 acceptance video here. Hello, I'm Joyce, the founder of Wonderful Milk. Thank you for giving me the award for SWA. Oh, just give us a second. We, I don't think we have a visual on that yet. That's right. Let's try that again. Let's give our team a couple of seconds, okay? 2020 under the Once again, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, the winner for the month of February. What from Wonderful Milk uh, Private Limited. Let's um, have that slide up again and see if it works this time. Fingers crossed. If we all cross our fingers, it'll work. <laughs> Here's the hoping, of course. Hello, I'm Joyce, the founder of Wonderful Milk. Thank you for watching for awarding me the award for SWA 2020 under the e-commerce category. All right, you guys. So unfortunately, we were unable to get uh, the visual on the video here, but that's okay. I think everybody heard what she had to say. Congratulations once again. Uh, apologies for the slight technical issue here. Uh, but yes, we will be moving on up next with the winner for the month of May. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of May, our winner is... Meowprint.sg by Meowprint Hello. Private Limited. Great job, you guys. And of course, for the month of June, our winner is sunlaksa.com.sg by Chi Chi. Hey, Titi, why don't you join me on screen? Congratulations once again. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot for the awards. Uh, especially throughout my blog, uh, I, I started designing my own blog. So slowly, I start to help other people to design. So Senatsa is one of my clients, which I helped them to design during the pandemic. Uh, so thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Job well done. Congratulations once again. Okay, you. So up next for the month of September, our winner is Groovy Giraffe dot store by Groovy Giraffe. Magnificent work there, you guys. Good job. For the month of October, our winner is Chennai Online dot SG by Raju Venkatesan. And finally, for the month, oh no, not finally, this is for the month of November. My apology, it's for the month of November. ShopTaketo.com by Taketo.
Congratulations. And now, finally, for the month of December, we'd like to congratulate SGFashionHut.com by Arvin from Ravianash Web LLP. Hey, Arvin, congratulations. Thank you, Lauren, for inviting me for this award. I am very deeply honored and grateful to have chosen me this award for the Site Talk Month. This award is very meaningful for us, and I would like thanks to SWA, and also I must thank Exavite for organizing this award. And lastly, I thank to my team member who worked with us to get this award. Thank you so much. You're absolutely welcome, and we believe that this is the first of many awards for you. Congratulations once again, Arvin. Thank you. All right, you guys. So we're going to be moving with our final presentation for today. Now we're going to be talking about how to become a UX leader in a large organization. We're going to be speaking to the Associate Director of Global Head uh, of Experience Design, Pranav Joshi. Hi, Pranav. Hey, guys. Hope you can hear me and you can see me as well. Yes, uh, there's a little bit of a slight lag, but I hope that's not too much of concern. I don't think it will be. I think you'll be fine. But uh, right off the bat, how are you doing? All good. Listening are exciting speakers. I think I'm, I learn a lot, and I always. I mean, this is not my first time with uh, Exabyte, so I always have a good fun time with you guys, and I always happy to share something and learn something always. So thanks for organizing this. And absolutely interesting. We also have a fun time with you every single time you come around. So we are excited to see what you have in store for us. Why don't you go ahead and share your screen? Sure. I think this time I come with uh, changing people's life. Right. Let's let's see how. <laughs> Uh, let's let me go ahead and share my screen and let me know once you start seeing my screen. Okay, so we're gonna wait. Ah, do okay. Okay. I guess and I now. Yes, I can see your screen now. You just need to go into present. Okay, there you go. So, front of the screen is yours. Whenever you're ready, take it away. And if you need help or if you need anything, just let me know. I'll be here. Sure. Thank you. Uh, th th thanks again for the help. So, uh, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna share two stories, and one of the story, which is my own story, out of these two, is how start with a lost dog's poster to become a global leader, and that might help you. I think you are somewhere if you are into design or whichever doesn't matter if you are designer or not designer, but you are somewhere in this uh, zone. So I think it's uh, good to hear. Uh, which stage you are in and there are better stages ahead and I will share all the stages with you. So who am I? I'm a global head of experience design in MSD Pharma. If you know, do not know what is MSD Pharma, we are known as a Merck Pharmaceutical in the United States and outside we are known as a Merck Sharp and Dome, which is MSD. We have a 78,000 employees plus minus, uh, 68 to 78,000 plus minus always uh, uh, employees in 142 countries. This company is almost 130 plus year old. By now, I think 135 years. So it's a very well established, but we are not into the shelf. That means you don't find our product. You go to Watson's or Guardian and say, I want ABC and you won't find $2, $5 stuff very commonly from our, our company. We are very highly prescribed drug, drugs. So yeah, touch wood if, if you have uh, some, some of your family member come across some kind of disease where they have to go to stage three and stage four, doctor will prescribe some drugs which come from a company like my company, right? So that's why you won't hear from us regularly. I'm going to share today two stories. One is my own and another one is, there is a, a trainer in a Nelson Norman group and this is her story. And it's uh, both are good to learn and excite and uh, practice uh, this, some of the uh, th theories. So I choose both of this story uh, where you can relate to, maybe you, can, you are in one of the stage. Let me go ahead and share about Nancy Dixon, who, who she is. So Nancy, she, uh, she did some designing course in US and then she was looking for some, uh, she was some of the uh, a designer in some of the small startup and she got, that time Apple, Apple was startup as well. And she got a job in Apple at early stage when they were designing this quick time and those kind of, and this is not the real quick time, but I found this is the only photographs, uh, oldest photographs. So she was a designer to design like some kind of like numbers here on the time frame. You can see some uh, key frames moving and these buttons. 
So there was a designer and she was an assistant designer or junior designer. So they both were working on the quick time and nobody had an idea at that time what video can be played on computer. And this was the first player they were designing. So that's how she started some of her early stage journey. And then, so let me, let me share what happened next. Then this quick time player was launched. Then she found the job is monotonous. She left and she joined eBay and she joined eBay, not as a junior designer, but she joined as a designer. When she joined eBay, eBay was doing fine. They, they were doing a good uh, amount of earning and they hired her because they needed uh, some kind of posters and uh, some of the basic work. So she was doing like uh, the events in the company excite people and say you can with help of design you can change something this these are the important tools these are the important skills nobody was listening to her her job was to like design some poster and put it in ebay and that's all so what she did was she was free 80 percent of the time she was free people are not listening to her so what she did she started looking or become a tester in her own site which is an ebay site she go to the eBay, look everything in a detail, write stuff down, and she found out one interesting thing, which is there is a registration page and it is extremely cluttered. So she, she asked people and said, who is the one who is working on this registration page? And she found out the program of the developer. So she sit down with the developer for a few, a few days and they found out that the, 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 the people who come to this page and then they start registering and they drop off are like 24 to 25%. So 25% of the people never register, even they come to this page and they drop off, they never register here. And she started asking this question to herself, what can be done to change this scenario? So what she did was she started drafting some of the better version of the, the form. And the better version was this, as you can see on your uh, on the rightmost hand, this was a very simple, and this is not, these are, these are not the exact form, by the way, because she didn't share this in her story. I, I was with her in one of the uh, workshop and conference, and that's how uh, we come to know about this. So she didn't share any pictures. So I put up these pictures from internet somewhere, but she came up with a simplified version. Until then, it was a very cluttered version. And in our previous speaker, you have seen all this UI related stuff. So I'm not going to talk much about how to improve the UI, but because they have done a good job in their sharing. So when Nancy come up with this, she started banging every single person and say, can we have this, can we have this new form? And let's try that if people are registering. And everybody rejected. When somebody reject, she go to hierarchy. Somebody reject, go to hierarchy. And she reached to CFO. That time, eBay was fully controlled by chief financial officer. So she got an appointment for three minutes to CFO. And she explained this. CFO says, can, are you sure that this 25% people who are dropping off is because of the form design? And then says, hey, I'm very sure. So CFO asks another question is, if, what, if I can, what if I can give you a, some percentage to experiment, what will you do? She said, I need a three to four weeks to show you something. Okay, here you go. So she, CFO called the program lead, project lead and say, give her a smallest space to launch this. So they went to the global, that time eBay was global. They went to the global. They look at the most upcoming space and they found out in United Kingdom, there is a very small place in United Kingdom. And this is the area if we should focus and let's change this form when there is an IP address is this. So they launched new form and they were shocked. That time, the, the average form was 400 a week, our average 300 to 400 people submit forms a week. The moment they change this form in that United Kingdom, it become more than 1,600. It jumped like three to four, five, six times. And it was shocking. Within one month, they take this data, go back to CFO and put the data. And CFO jump and CFO say, let's scale this up to whole United Kingdom and let's see what happened in the next two months. They changed the form. New form was scaled up in the United Kingdom and then so on and so forth. And this thing grew. And today we don't see cluttered form at all. We see more and more easier and much. And the previous guys, they already said all those things. So you know better. The point is she started looking at the something which is called numbers. Where can I, as a designer, change 
perspective which can influence people who take decision based on numbers and i'm coming back in the detail later so this was that was one example and she got a lot of credit and say so, yeah because of you and uh, uh, what i heard is there was extra 7 million dollar was created that particular year by having extra 25 to 30 percent new user who used to drop off from ebay when they come to registration page and they found it complicated right and that was a boost so she started looking into the website again and she found out that this page where maximum people go and do shopping or trading or polling that page is cluttered and that time this icon was extremely small there was a very small thumbnail and there was a big text and there was a big number like five thousand five hundred dollar and so on and so forth so she started redesigning this page and proposed a new page and this is the page as you can see um there was a big picture and there are good texts so let me escape and show you okay so there was a there was a picture the thumbnail size was become uh, was suggested as a new and of course these are the latest screenshot i took but the idea of a big screen uh, thumbnail was her idea so she again go back to cfo cfo says let's try it in a smaller percentage of community somewhere let's check the data and so on so forth and it become history and this so what they did is this time they add 10 cent if you want a smaller icon it's free if you want a bigger picture like this of your product we will charge you extra 10 cent and that's all people started giving 10 cent and it was again it ran in the million i don't have exact numbers right so but you get the point as a designer or wherever you are doesn't matter you're a developer programmer whoever you are it's not important the important is do you see the way ceo the cfo people sees your product the company right the solution and that's why i put it as a dollar designer so she from junior designer to become a dollar designer i will talk in a moment now let me put everything in a timeline and when we understand that how it happened so she was a junior designer designing some buttons and some small icons and so on and so forth from there in her next job she started asking people that what can i do as a designer and nobody give her any job for a few weeks to a few months what she did is she changed asking question to herself that instead of what can i do let's think of something better so she herself find out some of the page i can improve and then those pages lead her to bigger and bigger so she was the only designer i mean they had a few designer but she was the only designer who never appreciated but in just three and a half year later she was a global design director in ebay and she was there are 300 designers was reporting to her more than 300 designers reporting globally why because cfo said design is equal to dollar and that's exactly what happened so we as a designer when you are we are junior we think pixels need to be perfect when we become per when we become seniors every pixel is equal to dollar and this is exactly how we need to think so if you are keep on thinking about pixel you are designer or if you are keep on thinking about much lesser than the pixel you are junior designer so different stage your thinking methodology will be different right so this is nancy dixon's story very inspiring i i love this and i share this story with few other designers in different forum to get inspired that in three and a half year you can have 300 people reporting to you in just three and a half year right uh, and it is possible i mean you can be a shy designer today but you can be in the future you can be a leader if you think the way nancy thought and i have the similar story to share from my side so let me go ahead and quickly share so i was a designer somewhere a few years you don't need to know where i was from india then in malaysia i worked for a few years uh, three and a half years and then in singapore 11 years so that's the story and again i become senior designer somewhere which you don't need to know all those things you, my linkedin is there if you wanted to know we don't need to waste time when i joined this pharmaceutical company i was joined as a senior designer and they had only one designer that is me right and they had some other designer than they hire in europe and uh, in us there are some designers came in and so on and so forth so the team started becoming big that time people come and ask me i will share in next few slides come and ask me hey Bob. so i go and tell them that i can design your whole website we have a lot of website which is client facing which is like doctors are reading our content patients are reading our content our internal people are reading our content so these are the ugly designs can we help 
And they say, yeah, we all know, but can you just help me to change the logo? Or can you help me to design a poster for the dog? And those kind of things, right? In a different company, different stage, I receive these kind of requests. So I started from that. Even though being a senior designer, don't ask the question that why are you giving me such a small stupidity? People in my first year of career in this organization or every organization I go, they ask me and say, can you design nice PowerPoint? This is a very common story, by the way. And they want you to come out with a nice, sexy looking, glamorous uh, PowerPoint slide, right? So this is the same thing I started. And within, within just another two years, I started having a vision of dollar value. And I started putting my own thoughts that how can a user can come and get maximum information what a user want. Of course, I do not have my examples to share here because it is pharmaceutical and we need to go through a lot of legals and stuff like that. So we can't share anything as advertised. Uh, but the, the story behind that was, I started seeing that how can I give more value to every single person? Either it can be a doctor, it can be a patient. If they come see, they should, within a max, minimum time, maximum things should be covered. But at the same time, my company need to have some profit. When I started thinking that, company started thinking me to get promoted and they started giving me more and more people. So I had one to become two and three and so on and so forth. So that's how we, uh, in, in, and then in 2019, within three years down the road, I started another things, which I encourage all of you. As you can see below is a mentoring. Start mentoring when you start, when you're a senior designer or somewhere in a senior position entering to that not only that, but mentor outside of your company, outside of your space. I have mentored globally, Russians or even Japanese. I have mentored many of the people. People are flying in the flight as an air stewardess and they have, the, they have a message they are sending me and I have those kind of chats as well. So I love mentoring and I did that. And that helps you to learn a lot that how global perspective thinks about uh, this uh, space of design. And that helps me a lot. So looking inside that how can we grow with a dollar value and looking outside, then when you think st started thinking towards the global, how can I help my existence, my knowledge? How can I help as much as possible? You are growing such a big. Now my team globally is 52 people, including Europe and US, right? And I am global lead, leading a lot of work uh, day and night. We are doing, of course, dollar value increasing my vision. At the same time, I'm doing more mentoring and internally and externally both. So the point here is, if you are looking towards, it doesn't matter you are a developer, programmer, you are sales, whoever you are, end of the day, dollar value. And let me explain this in a detail in the next slide. Dollar value is a lot more important. And a value which is satisfying to your customer is a lot more important. And the previous speaker had said a good amount of information on that, the funnel for the business. So let me share how my posters, the journey look like in a quick format. So when you join any organization, this is what they do. They say, hey, hey, designer, uh, can you help me to design my poster for the dog? And I want my puppy to look cute. And you get the point. Uh, it can be, doesn't matter if it's a poster for the dog it, or it's their own personal project or corporate project, but those projects, nobody will in involve you in a 5 million or 50 million worth of project on a first day. And don't get disappointed with that. What you need to do is you need to put a lot of efforts in a extremely small things because you need to build a relation and trust. I'm coming to that point about the trust. So what does it mean? You start small and this is how you start. So people come to you and they say, oh, I have a one small logo, one small page to design. Can you do, can you write the English later for me? Can you decorate my PowerPoint website? Hey. So this kind of small, small stuff, reach out to you. Don't say no, doesn't matter how senior you are, how many years of experience you are. When you are in a new organization, you are zero for them. And that's why you have to start from zero. Let's accept the truth. Once you do that, what you're going to achieve is you're going to build a trust. And trust cannot be built by bigger project. Because bigger project, if you wanted to build a Taj Mahal or Burj Khalifa, it will take 10, 20, 100 years. Taj Mahal completed total in 32 years total, end to end. So you can't build a trust right when you wanted to focusing on Taj Mahal. But if you focus something, someone's PowerPoint, that guy will go back to his boss and say, hey, his PowerPoint his skill is good and his turnaround time is good and he's very good smiley guy. So be smiley. Uh, always you need to keep on smile and give all the stuff. His boss will come to you once he's in trouble and say, I need another PowerPoint two slide. Can you do this? But I have only one hour left. Try to give your best and they will appreciate you. Once you build a trust and this is what happened. 
more and more people will know you as a, that guy or that girl and say, you reach out to that guy, I tell you, he will change your perspective and da, 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 da. So become that guy. Being that guy is this is the journey. Start with extremely small, extremely poor, which is not so important for many people, but it is important for you because three years later, there are 300 people waiting for you to report. So don't look at your logo design or small puppy lost my poster and this and that. Look at three, four, five years long journey. And this is how I did. I was not, I was not irritated by any work come to me, but I was happy that I have every single day, I have one new person to meet, somebody trusting me and so on and so forth. Once I reached to that, become a that guy, the next journey I started looking at is, how can I tell company that I'm saving your money or something about money or some values, right? Inside the company. So you have to think this, how can you save money? Saving is the first priority of any organization. Don't, don't focus on making money. Try to think of saving money unless you are in a sales, okay? So try to think of saving money and saving money will give you a thought process of making money. That's my observation. But if you focus only on a making money, then you have a lot of struggle to make. So try to think that how can I save money in my organization? It will give you a lot more broader idea to how can we save and make more, more money. So the second perspective in larger organization, people have a biggest worry is how can I go faster? Can I cut down my time to half? If you listen to them carefully and you start working towards that, some of the tool simplifying simplification like Nancy Dixon, she did, that was a complex, complex form. She redesigned it in an extremely simple form and it saved people's time, internal and external both. And that's exactly what we need to think in a larger organization. People are worried so much about saving time. We need to think of them. Then only you go into how can I help you to make money? And I don't need to explain this, right? How can you need to make money? You can find out in your own company. Most of the time, this is my advice. CEO, every three months you have a town hall. Listen to that town hall. If you most likely you have a share price and all, listen to the board of directors view and listen to the Bloomberg's and those kind of websites, what they are talking about your companies. It will tell that where your company's direction is going. And then you start relating the dot that, for example, let's say if I listen that suddenly um, uh, my pharmaceutical company have a challenge uh, to engage more customer or patients in, in drug for asthma or let's say drug for cancer, okay? What I will do is I will go back. Why? Because there is a competition in increasing and other competitors have a better product or a cheaper product or whatever. Because of the competition, my product can't do much. My job is what is internally we have. We have websites, digital tool, and doctors are relying on that. How can I make that tool better? Which is the most important tool for the global to reach out to us in name of cancer. So I start looking at those kind of area. And that's how we decide that, okay, we can make a little bit more better achievement to satisfy our customer and eventually it will go to the dollar value but thinking towards the direction from the ceo perspective bloomberg and those kind of third party websites or, or the news channel perspective and then there are that's not it normally we think that that's all but that's not it i also realize building your own internal community is also a lot more things you can train more and more people and they will learn through you they will see through your eyes and they say no oh, okay we all, if we think from a better design perspective, I think that will help us. So build a community and do the regular community practice. If you have internal website, you can share. You don't have, you have WhatsApp groups, share every week that this is the better use of design. And there are a lot of articles and stuff. Summarize for them. This is another thing. You summarize for them and send it to them. So they will thank you, thanking you. Because when you send in a WhatsApp group or your company chat, nobody reads it. Hardly 5% people reads it. But if you summarize and say in this article, you found these are the three most important points, they will love it. They might read it, might not read it, but they will love that you are sharing and they will start following you. You will create your, your own followers this way. Now, I have a very interesting uh, 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 method which I come across um, by number of discoveries. So I wanted to share this is a success formula. Let me quickly go ahead and share this picture. This is common in some of the countries, right? This picture is taken from India. The problem in this picture is it's illegal. You cannot sit four people in two wheeler, right? But it is in many, many of the cities, this is possible. People does this. So why, why this happened? Why do people take risk? Let's go through that and I will tell you how it relates to what I'm going to say in next, in next two, three slides. So 
things normally globally start with philosophy. Doesn't matter you are thinking on your own, your startup, you are a big company, always philosophy comes first. What does it mean? In this picture, they started thinking and say, we all four people are staying in the same area and we all are four traveling in the same factory area. Why don't we travel together? We save money, it is economic, it is eco-friendly, we all can chit chat, so on and so forth. So that is some philosophical things are working. And then once they get convinced, they need to convince someone psychologically. For example, there is a lady, a woman sitting in the bike. Now, India is not that open country where women can sit down with these three men on the bullets or bikes or, and they can travel easily. So they need to convince this woman, right? That it's okay, we are four, you can sit down with us, we can bring you, you are safe, so on and so forth, right? So some psychological discussion came in. There is another psychological discussion came in the picture is, we are four people, but it's okay. If police try to catch us, we will try, try to find a shortcut. We will use another way. It's okay, we can travel together. So there are many philosophical convincing happen. That is like this boy, the first person is sitting on a petrol tank or a gas tank. He gets, he needs to go through philo psychological convincing that it's okay, it's not that dangerous to sit down on a petrol tank. So he is getting convinced by psychology as well. So there is a lot of amount of psychology. So first you need to talk about philosophy. We all wanted to do all common goal is saving money and moving faster so on and so forth. And then go to psychology, how we will do it. You will sit here and so on and so forth. And then you could talk about ethics. While this one is illegal, and I will come back to the ethics point. If your product is illegal, it won't work. So it needs to be legal completely. Of course, in this picture, it is illegal and I will, I will visit to this again. And then talk about technology. Now, these four people are staying in a four different house. They are chatting with each other and the, the person who is riding the bike, he said, hey, I'm leaving my house. Can you come out of your house? And they all, four, three other people came out of their house and he fetched one by two by three and so on and so forth. So they are using a WhatsApp. They are using a mobile as a chatting platform so they can communicate. And they are using a vehicle as another technology, right? So there are two technology working, automation technology and IT technology. These two technologies are working to communicate and move from destination A to B. Now, there is a method to sit down. Since this is a woman, she will sit down last. It's not advisable to sit in a sandwich version where she sits in between and there are two men. So that's one way. The other guy, this is a short person. So he sit down front. So this guy, the person who is riding the bike, can see through clearly, right? So this is the positioning. That's a method they use. How are we gonna use it? That is our next method they use. What are the shortcut we need to use? We don't need to go through all the main roads because police, uh, traffic police might catch us. So let's use some of the shortcuts. So there are a number of methods they are using on top of the technology. Of course, they have technology to communicate and travel, but they have certain methods. And the last and the most important thing is economic value. Why? What is the benefit of doing this? Of course, they are saving time and they are saving money. And maybe these four people are sharing petrol cost. So this person who is riding this bike, he has lesser value to pay in a petrol cost. So you get the point. And these are, these are the key elements. These are the six pillars. I discover my own self. We, I call it Eagle Framework. And there is, a, there is a lot more discussion on Eagle Framework, which I haven't put it here because we don't have time. But if you guys are interested, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I will share those stuff. But these are the pillars which helps to move faster. And this is exactly what I have done in my organization as well. I start with philosophical thinking, but I always keep my eyes on all those things. Now, what is the value of this picture? Let me tell you the value of this picture now. This is illegal. That's why the value of the picture is zero. But if I make these things legal, the value of this picture is $5 billion. You know Gojek, we all know Gojek, right? Gojek sign or tick all these things. Gojek have given a helmet to the passenger, to the driver, rider. So passenger also, and compulsory passenger needs to wear a helmet. And so you get the point. I mean, everything is legal. Everything is ethical. They started with same philosophy that can two different people, unknown people, travel in the same destination on the same vehicle through our platform and we can make money. Can, is it possible? And they started asking themselves a question and say, yes, it is possible. How are we going to make possible? Then second question comes in psychology is, in country like Indonesia, unknown woman sitting behind unknown man, how are we going to make this possible? By making more 
more uh, more transparent way there is an application mobile application and making it more common and this unknown guy if he is wearing a gojek jacket people will say oh okay he is a driver and this is a passenger they don't see a man and woman sitting down they see driver passenger rider and passenger this is definitely ethical because the law says if driver or rider don't give you helmet don't sit down with him simple so rider have helmet so both are having a technology the mobile application and the, the motorbike the methodologies of course they have to follow certain step you have to register as a rider you have to go through certain testing and there as a passenger and so on and so forth and there is economic value company is making money rider is making money and passenger is saving money so everybody wanted to use the platform successful platform can be you go you you take apple phone or you take um, tesla anything you take these are the six pillar and there are a lot more things which i am not sharing here but these are the six pillar in this sequence will go through that's why it is successful and even you are personally taking it you have to think this way that how can i bring this similar value in my company how can i think from philosophy to economics right so these are the three tips i have first tips small is right don't say no small i don't want to touch i am i'm 10 years experience and so on and so forth you change the company you lose everything you start from zero so if you are doing small work in your organization you are doing right work in a bigger organization especially even if it is a startup small is right this is a second trust first you can be technically strong you can be great talent and so much passionate if you fail to build a trust people say that is the guy you should go to and if people say no that's the guy you shouldn't go to if you fail to build a trust you go to office just to charge your phone use a washroom sometime you drink a free coffee in the machine and check the email sometime but you are not creating value to your personal career as well as for the company build a trust first so that's that's another point and this is the third and last point numbers are valuable extremely valuable so if your efforts is very philosophical but not economical then you are just they are hanging around as a soul people like your thoughts they like to sit down with you when they have time but they don't give you a project and your career is in doom right so these are my three valuable points i won't take any more time guys linkedin is the only tool i use to communicate outside of my company so you can search for pranav joshi you can see this photograph and the biggest thank you i think i wanted to tell in behalf of you and behalf of me is to exabyte because uh, honestly in this pandemic we all are learning from each other and what we need is a, is a, this kind of platform where they put a lot of effort like the, the host sami she she has done a tremendous job and the, the, all those people behind the team i i meet them personally a few times in past when we were doing the event together and i appreciate that effort they you guys have done it digitally as well so keeping that on the momentum thank you very much on behalf of the whole community thank you very much and guys you have more questions you have more thoughts you have similar stories please share with me on a linkedin i do live on linkedin uh, always so thank you very much thanks a lot guys all right thank you prana for all the kind compliments and for your outstanding presentation i really, really enjoyed it especially like when you use gojek as an example i didn't expect you to put that into perspective because most of the time these things like i said they fly under the radar right under our noses and then when you actually you know make a point to tell us you're like oh wow this actually makes a lot of sense so thank you for that thanks a lot all right we'll see you in just a bit we have a group photo at the end of this so do stick around right now we're going to be proceeding with the winner announcement for the favorite website awards thank you parnas we'll see you in a bit okay so here we go ladies and gentlemen we are going to be announcing the winners for the favorite website awards as voted by you First up, our commercial category. Now, the winners for this category will be taking home a prize worth five hundred dollars worth of Exabyte credits. So here we go. Our favorite website award winner for the commercial category is Kelby.com.sg by Elves Lab Private Limited. Congratulations, you guys! Now they have sent us a video, so let's take a look at it. Hello, everybody. My name is Ken Hai, and sitting beside me is my lead designer Han Yi and my senior developer Jun Xian. We would like to thank Exabyte for organizing the Singapore Website Award 2020 event. We are very honored to receive the favorite website awards of the year with the Kelby website design that we just launched last year. 
First of all, we would like to thank Kelby Mosin Private Limited, in particular Miss Eunice Teo for appointing us to rebrand their website and we are glad they have always been very open to all our ideas and suggestions. They do share the same belief that each website should be unique instead of being templated as each website carries the corporate identity, visions and mission. Thus, we are always more than happy to be able to conceptualize unique design for our client and fulfill what they need. During the process, our lead designer Ani worked closely with Kelby and conceptualized the web design out after gathering their art direction. Our developer team made it possible for the website to be good in both UI and UX. It was not an easy task to develop such a creative yet responsive website from scratch. They had to adjust each graphics element to retain the creativity among all browsers and devices. We overcome all situations with the help of our creative and eager eye designers. Both Kelby and Elslab are happy and proud to win this award. Lastly, we would like to thank all our clients for engaging Elslab for our services, which include social media design, SEO, SEM, and website design services for the past 21 years. We will continue to strive hard and deliver the best to our clients. Thank you. And thank you guys, a wonderful video. Congratulations once again. Okay, up next, the winner for the personal category is foodchia.com by Daniel. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations once again to foodchat.com by Daniel. Don't worry about the, the lack of music that I hear it too. It's okay. Moving forward, our winner for the e-commerce category, the favorite website award is automaxima.com.sg by Karuna Singapore Private Limited. Hey, you guys, congratulations again. The favorite website award to the e-commerce category. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else to add on? Um, it's a very huge honor for our company, Corona Singapore, to receive this award. We will continue to do, to do our best next time. Yeah. Absolutely. And we look forward yeah. to seeing more from you. Congratulations yeah. once again. Fantastic right, bye. job. Bye. bye. Please stick around for the ending. Okay, so with that, we're going to be moving on to the highlight of today's event. That's right, the Singapore Website Awards 2020. This is the Creme de la Creme, the Site of the Year Award. Now, we're going to be taking a look at the videos that we have here for our commercial category. But might I just add on that the winners from this category will be taking home a prize worth $1,000 worth of extra bytes credits. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at our nominees. There you have it. All right, you guys. So with that being said, let me know in the chat box right now who you think the winner is going to be. I'll give you a few seconds, key in a few names for me if you would. This is absolutely exciting. Once again, this is the winner announcement of the site of the year for our commercial category. So 
Here we go. I'm going to be announcing it now. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for the commercial category, the site of the year award is gramvideos.com by Gram. Congratulations, you guys. Site of the Year, a job well done. Moving forward, we're going to be announcing the winner for Site of the Year for our personal category instead. Let me know who you think is going to win this award in the chat box right now. And of course, let's take a quick look at all our nominees. Here we go. I'm very excited to announce this one. So the winner of the Site of the Year Award for the personal category and who's going to be taking home $1,000 worth of Exabytes credits is musicphotolife.com by Chester Tan. A round of applause, you guys. Congratulations, Chester. Join me on screen right now. Oh, I hope he's still there, though. <laughs> Calling for Hi, Chester. Hi. Hello. Are you are you surprised? Yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, Congratulations. Yeah, I appreciate, yeah. Yes, yes, I appreciate this award. Yeah, I mean, I have no words. Uh, and yeah, so I've won two awards this year. So... Yeah, thank you so much. I look forward to improving my website better. And uh, let's hope for next year more awards. <laughs> Absolutely. And to think that you're just a few hours back, you were saying that you've been doing this for 10 years and you weren't sure about it. And here you are this year. I mean, for the year 2020, you have won site of the year. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Congrats once again. Okay, you guys. So we have one final category to announce, and that is the e-commerce category. Let's have a look at our nominees. There you have it, you guys. And with that, we are ready to announce our final award for today. And that is the e-commerce winner. And of course, once again, this person is going to be taking home a prize worth $1,000 worth of Exabytes credits. And here we go. Our site of the year award for the e-commerce category goes to sgfashionhut.com by Arvin from Ravrianash Web LLP. Arvin, congratulations, Site of the Year. 
Thank you, Lauren. It's a wonderful day. I receive, I'm receiving the second time award from the SWA. It's a wonderful, really appreciate SWA and Exabyte for giving me a, such a wonderful award. Absolutely. We are over the moon just as you are. And of course, do stay on screen here right now because we would like to invite all the panelists uh, on screen right now for a group photograph. So everyone who is here right now, just go ahead and turn on your cameras. We'll take a quick group photograph. Yeah, just to remember this special day. Congratulations once again to all the winners. And of course, if you'd like to take a photo of uh, this screen right now, all you have to do is go ahead and click on snapshot. You can always share it on our Facebook page at Singapore website with the hashtag SWA Exabytes and Grow Digital. Once again, calling all panelists and uh, award winners, just go ahead, turn on your video right now and join me on screen. All right, super cool, you guys. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> You've already appeared on screen with us one thirty, so this is pretty much no different. There you go. We've got one, two, three. All right, our speakers too. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's do this. All right, looking good. So calling once again uh, to the rest of our people here. Let's see, we have just, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Let me see, everyone else has kind of left, but that's all right, so here we go. Let's take a group photograph. <laughs> uh, for those of you from Karuna, Singapore, if you'd like to join us on screen right now, that will be wonderful as well from Chris Digital. If you're here, just go ahead and turn on your uh, webcam right now or your uh, camera and join us on screen. Let's give you guys a couple more seconds to do that. Okay, I think with that, we can just go ahead and take a group photograph with everyone who is here. So um, on the count of three, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, great. And let's take one more for our uh, organizing committee, just for contingency sake, because we all know we don't take one photograph nowadays. We take multiple, but we'll keep it to two today. So ready? Once more. One, two, three. All right. Fantastic, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We are going to wrap things up right now at the Singapore Website Awards. For everyone who's tuning in right now, you have been absolutely amazing. A fantastic audience. Congratulations once again to all the winners and to the rest of our speakers who have uh, given their input and their effort today. Thank you so much. We have a closing video for your entertainment right now. I'm going to be signing off. Thank you once again, and we'll see you next year. My name is Laureen. Bye! <laughs>